Hey everybody, Johnny here. In this quick video, we're going to take a look at how to take a render like this, which looks okay, and try to turn it into something a little more realistic looking, something like this. In order to do that, we're going to take a look at some real world properties of light and learn a little bit about color temperature. Let's get into it. In this scene, I have two light sources. The first is a point light that sits inside this lamp. And the second is an emission shader on the dome of the ceiling fan. You can see here that the point light is set at white and at 60 watt power. The emission shader for the fan light is also set at white with a strength of 200. Now, of course, your light bulbs in your house are not pure white light sources. So leaving them at pure white is gonna give you a very artificial looking scene, or at best, looking like some kind of office with fluorescent lighting. This generally isn't the type of lighting you'd have in a living room. Now you might think, well the lighting in my living room has a bit of a yellowish tint to it. So I'm just going to change the color of my light to some yellow. And while this might look okay, something's off about it. So instead of guessing at the color, it's best to use real world settings for our lights. But you might be wondering, what are real world settings for light color? If I do a quick search for light bulbs on Amazon, in a lot of the descriptions, you'll see the color listed. However, if you don't know what you're looking for, it might not be immediately obvious. Let's take this one for example. This is a 60 watt equivalent light, 2700K soft white. The thing we're looking for is the 2700K. This is the color temperature of our light. Now color temperature is a funny thing. A lot of times when we think about color, we think of warm colors being things like oranges and reds and cold colors being things like blue and white. However, when it comes to actual color temperature, it's exactly opposite. The lower the number, the more red the light will be. And the higher number, the more white or blue the light becomes. Let's take a look at why that is. This is a color temperature chart. It shows us color temperatures from 1000K to 12000K. Now the K in this instance stands for Kelvin. Kelvin is a unit of measure for absolute temperature. Kelvin is actually on the same scale as Celsius. Except a temperature in Kelvin is 273 degrees colder than the same temperature in Celsius. So zero degrees Kelvin is actually negative 273.15 degrees Celsius. And if you're more familiar with the Fahrenheit scale, zero Kelvin is negative 459.67 degrees Fahrenheit. It's pretty cold. So in a theoretical sense, color temperature works like this. If you take this substance called a black body, which is basically a perfectly opaque and non-reflective substance, no matter what temperature it's at, it's going to be emitting thermal electromagnetic radiation. It's not until it reaches absolute zero that it stops. Now this radiation comes off in wavelengths, and it turns out that as electromagnetic radiation reaches certain levels, we start to see that as color. Perfect example of this is a blacksmith or a glass blower who are heating up their elements and as those objects get hotter they start to glow that glow goes from red to orange to white so here in blender i've got a basic scene i've got a blank floor i've removed the world of this scene so there's no skylight and i've got a cylinder right now i've put a basic principled shader on this object i'm going to change the emission color to pure white and go into rendered mode now the question is how do we turn this into a black body well, lucky for us, there's a black body node. So if I go Shift A, Converter, I'll choose black body. I'm going to plug the color output of our black body into the emission of our principled shader. The black body node starts at 1500 degrees Kelvin. So if we look at our chart here, 1500 degrees puts us right about here. And we can see that the light this is emitting is right around this area. If I take this down to 1000, we get the red, if I take it up to 8,000, white, and it starts to get blue. And if I take it up to 12,000, you can see the blue tint now in the light that this is emitting. If we do a quick search for color temperature chart on Google, one of the things I came up with was this chart from Philips, which shows you some of the options that are available. But without knowing it, when it comes to internal lighting, you're probably used to these colors. So these colors look right to your eyes when it comes to lighting and other colors will just look off. So let's see how we can use that in our scene. First, let's look at our point light. 
What we're going to do is in our settings, we're going to choose to use nodes for this light. So now down here in our shader editor, our light has been given an emission node. We want to set the color of this emission node with a black body node. So I'll do a shift A converter black body and hook that in. Of course, 1500 is way too low. I'm going to go with 3500. Already, this is a much softer light over here, and it's much more pleasing than the bright pure white. Going to my ceiling fan dome, I already have an emission shader on that. So I'll add a black body there, hook that in, and change it to the same value. Now, of course, you can tweak the power of the outputs of your lights. And this way, you can make them more balanced. And say in this overhead light, you want a little bit cooler light like say a 5,000 Kelvin bulb. While this is closer to the bright white we started with, it's not quite, and looks more like the light you'd have in a bathroom rather than in a living room. So maybe we'll take this one down to 3,500. So there we go. It's a simple change that you can do to your scenes, but I would always suggest if you're adding light bulbs to your scene, drive their color with a black body node. Don't try to eyeball it. This will make your interior lighted scenes much more realistic. So give this a try in one of your scenes. I'll also make this scene file available in a link below so you can download it and try it yourself. I hope you found this informative. I hope it makes your renders even more awesome. And until next time, I'll catch you later.